Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose and today we're going to be talking about, you know, what does it mean to mourn? You know, the second beatitude is that, you know, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. What does, uh, what does this mean? What does Jesus mean about this? And what, how do we mourn? Because this is something that's very important to the Bible. Now, when we think about uh, the word mourn and the way that the Bible uses it, now, um, throughout the the Old Testament, whenever somebody dies, um, you know, there would be a, a period of time uh, when people would mourn. There would be a period of time when people would reflect on who died. They would, um, well, spend some time in prayer and, and fasting and, 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 you know, taking some time to reflect and to digest the, the passing and the death of someone. And it's something that, you know, people always took time to do within the Bible because, you know, the greatest commandment is for us to love our neighbor um, as ourselves. And the thing is, when you truly love somebody, when they die in the physical form, now we know within the faith that, you know, we who believe within Christ, we have eternal life, we will live forever and we will see our loved ones, uh, you know, those who believe in Christ and, and those who follow follow God, follow Christ. Um, you know, that we will see them again. Um, but the thing is, the Bible says, you know, to, to all of us, those who are within the body of Christ, you know, we believe in God, we believe in Jesus Christ, we believe in the Son, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and we're following God. Um, to all of us, you know, uh, when we lose somebody in this world, in this, the physical world that we live in, when we lose someone, uh, it's tough, it's not easy. And, and when you truly love someone, um, either it be a friend or, or a significant other or a child or or a mother, a father, an aunt, an uncle, or some some person that is very close to you. Uh, you know, it's it's good to take some time to mourn because mourning, uh, you know, it's it's a deep, deep look and, and understanding and, and reflection of what someone meant to you. Um, you know, one thing that, that showed how dark Cain was um, and how far away from God he was is um, how, <clears throat> you know, how he pretty much just told God that, you know, I am not my, my brother's keeper. You know, he just said to God, I am not my brother's keeper. And he did not mourn over his uh, brother's death. He said, you know, I'm not responsible for my brother's death. You know, he killed Abel. He had no problem with killing Abel. Um, he killed Abel without hesitation. Uh, that's the thing with Cain. Cain had no remorse. Uh, Cain had no, uh, he, he did not relent. He just killed his brother, had no problem with it, didn't shed a tear. He just did it. Um, when we truly love someone, when we truly um, are close with someone, when they die, you know, you feel that pang, you feel that hurt, you feel that that period of, of, you know, that you have to cry, you have to weep, you have to wail. You know, we who are, are called by God, we who are, who are called in love, we are supposed to love one another. And when you truly love one another, when you lose someone, you can't just be cold and have a cold shoulder. Uh, we have to mourn for their deaths. We have to, we have to spend a period of time uh, mourning for the deaths. This is very important. Now, now some can look at this, say this, this beatitude, and say we also we mourn for our sins. We mourn for our lot in life. We mourn for, um, you know, there's there's a lot of things as Christians uh, that we are to mourn for. Yes, uh, one of the ways that the Bible uses mourn is is the death of someone. Uh, is you know when somebody dies, how much it hurts, how much we you know we should spend time in remembering that person. Uh, and, and weeping and wailing for that person. Uh, at the same time, we can look at mourning is, is when we call upon the name of Christ, when we seek the name of, of God, we seek God uh, for our, our you know, redemption, for um, our deliverance. Because at the same time, we as Christians, we have to mourn over our own sins, mourn over our own shortcomings. Because in the Christian faith, when you realize how sinful you are, when you realize how much you've done wrong and, and you've done wrong, period, you have to go through a time of, of mourning, of, of repentance. And repentance, part of repentance is acknowledging 
um, how deadly and how sinful and, and, and the wrongs that you have done in your life and acknowledging the wrongs that you have done in your life. The thing is, think about Adam and Eve. When they sinned against God, they each had someone to blame. Um, Adam blamed God and he blamed Eve. Eve blamed the serpent. So everyone had, when God questioned them, you know, everyone had someone to blame except the serpent. This is something that's very interesting. Satan had nobody to blame but himself. His pride was entirely his. Um, the serpent just received this punishment. Adam was like, no, it wasn't me. It was Eve. You know, you gave me Eve and Eve gave me the fruit and I did eat. And Eve was like, no, it wasn't me. It was the serpent. The serpent, you know, told me of the fruit and I did eat. And, you know, everybody is passing the buck, has something to say. The thing is that we, we do have to reach a, a period of brokenness, a, a period of recognizing how much we need God, where we mourn over our own sins, where we mourn our, over our own position, where we recognize how much we need God, how much we need to see God. Because until you recognize where you are, who you are, you can't be a spiritual giant. You can't walk this narrow road. You have to call upon the name of Christ and ask him to save you and ask him to be your Lord and Savior. That is very important. You see, the Bible says, you know, um, you know, everyone who knocks, you know, the door will be uh, open to you. When you when you seek, you'll find you know, you, you don't have the things of God. You don't have God in your life, not because God doesn't love you. God has demonstrated again and again how much he loves us. You don't have the presence of God because you don't ask God for his presence. That is very powerful right now. If you want God's presence in your life, if you if you want to understand God more, if you want to understand your place within the universe more, if you want to understand the, the, the cross more, you want to understand Jesus more, you have to come to a place where you're mourning for your sins. You're mourning for your lot in life. You're mourning um, for, 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 you know, your being. Because if you don't recognize that, that without Christ, you're on the way to hell. You know, you have to recognize that. The world doesn't recognize this. Those who live in darkness, they don't recognize this. That they're on the way to hell. And if you want to, to turn back, and not to be going there. You have to mourn over your lot in life and, and, and what it means to go through this life into eternity and throughout eternity without Christ. This is why the Bible tells us that there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. There'll be regret. There'll be shame. You know, humans, oh, for all of eternity, all the humans that don't accept Christ, that don't follow him for all of eternity, there will be a wailing and gnashing and weeping. Because you will understand that God has crucified his son, has crucified himself for you, and you rejected him. So, you know, this is why the Bible says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Because once you recognize how much you need God, God, the Holy Spirit is a comforter. He's a counselor. He comes in. He grabs you. He comforts you. He gives you peace. God is a comforter. But you have to be in a state where you recognize your lot in life, where you mourn for, for, your, for the people that you've lost, where you mourn for your lot in life, where you mourn over your sin, you, you reject your sins. The thing is, like, there's a lot of people in this world, they, they do not see their sin as something that's bad. Their fornication, their, their drug use, their their disobedience towards parents, their, their disrespect towards their elders and parents. The, the thing is, like, the Bible calls us to respect, you know, people. Because to love your neighbor, it requires a certain amount of respect. We live in a world now where, where people don't respect each other. People don't honor each other. But God calls us to, to be different, to be separate. To mourn over your sins, to mourn over your losses, to mourn over your lot in life. It's very important because once you recognize where you are, once you call upon the name of Christ, you will be saved. And he'll come in, he'll be your teacher, your counselor, your healer, 
You're the, you know, he'll deliver you. But you have to come to the altar. You have to come to the cross. You have to recognize that you are a sinner. Without Christ, you have no hope of salvation. Christ is the narrow road. Christ is salvation. You have to mourn over your lot in life. This is why those who mourn are blessed. Because the arrogant, the prideful, the wise, a lot of people, this is one thing I have, I have to say about society, men who, who trust their wisdom, who trust their intelligence, a lot of, you know, atheists trust their 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 expert reasoning and, and, and how they've they've looked at the cosmos and, and they've concluded that there is no God. They 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 foolishly made this assertion. This they've they've reached this conclusion that there is no God. The thing is that when when they stand in front of God on, on that day, I wonder what they will say then. The thing is, they don't recognize. They don't mourn over their sin. Their sin. They see their sin at, as perfectly fine. The thing is, like the Bible tells us about this. Those who live in the darkness, they they feel completely comfortable. But when the light comes in, they they want to hide. When the light comes in, they want to, they want to shut off the light. You know, the Bible tells us that the darkness and the light, they cannot mix. This is why a lot of Christians can't be friends with people who are in darkness. This is why a lot of Christians feel uncomfortable with people who live in darkness continually. You can't be friends with them because your, your spirit, remember, your spirit, once you've accepted Christ, your spirit is alive. You're, you're, you're a new creature. You are alive. And, and the, the people who do not know Christ, who are living in the world, they're, they're, they're dead. Because only God has true life. So how can a living thing play with a dead thing? How can a, a living thing coexist with a dead thing? It just, it, it's not the same thing. This is why people who are saved, people who are seeking God, they cannot have fellowship with darkness. They cannot have fellowship with something that's of the world, something that's dead. And the way to get eternal life, the way to come to Christ is you need to mourn over your sin. You have to recognize, oh man, God, I need you. If I'm going to make it out of this world... If I'm going to make it into this new age, into your kingdom, well, I have to recognize my lot in life, my lot in reality. I have to mourn over my sins. I have to, to, to mourn for, for, for the people that I have lost. I have to mourn for my lot in life. There's several times where, where David is in, in, in the Psalms. He's, he's, he's weeping and wailing. In front of God, he's like, God, please help me with my enemies. Please help me in my struggles. Please help me. See, there's different types of, of mourning. There's times we're begging God. There's times we're, we're, we're asking God to please help us. Or there's times where we're crying over um, things that are happening. There's times that, I mean, think about Job. Job was in a period where he was mourning where, where you know, he was, there are times where he was just saying things that, that, that did not please God. But he was in a period where he was wailing and crying and weeping and, and, and literally asking God, you know, you're you you're the only one that can get me out of this situation that I'm in. I'm telling you, when when people mourn over sickness, when people mourn over disease, when people mourn over their lot in life, when men are brought down to their knees and submit and say that God is Almighty, well, God comes in and He comforts them. He's like, you know, <laughs> I am that I am. People don't put down their pride. They don't put down, you know, their, their, their preconceived ideas and preconceived notions. You're only going to make more pain for yourself. But if, if you do see God wholeheartedly and you mourn over your sins, you mourn over your lot in life, you truly see God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. 
you will be saved. You will be found in Christ. So the definition to mourn over your sins is to recognize where you are. Is to recognize when you lose someone. Is to recognize your, your sinful path and that the only way to be comforted is to see God with everything that you got. Everything that you that you have, everything that you, you got. You have to you have to seek God wholeheartedly. Because he's, you know, he's our only hope. You know, because because Jesus Christ is Lord, and every knee shall bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. 